Use code SPIKEFEEDERS for 5% off at facetofacegames.com. You can shop face-to-face games in US dollars, Canadian dollars, or even euros, and they'll ship just about everywhere. That's code SPIKEFEEDERS at checkout at facetofacegames.com to help support the show. We are back, this time with a new game summary featuring some of our patrons. First up, we've got Drew. You might know them as Beyond the Machina. And you might recognize some of Drew's art on the bar when we cut to face cams in our gameplay videos. Today, Drew is playing Krark and Sakashima, and they mulligan to six. Next up, we've got Dan playing Timna Krom. Dan mulligan to five. Jim's playing Urza Polykraken, and this is the same list from the earlier MLC games. Finally, we've got Spleenface, otherwise known as Morgan, playing Kalamax. If you want to check out the lists or any of Drew's art or proxies, you can find links in the show notes. Let's get right into it. There were no pregame actions, so Drew starts off turn one by drawing a card. They play Polluted Delta and crack it, going to 39, grabbing Volcanic Island, then passing the turn. Dan kicks off turn one by drawing a card, playing an Exotic Orchard, and passing. Jim kicks off turn one by drawing a card, playing a Snow-Covered Island, then casting Getaxian Probe targeting Drew. Drew reveals Scalding Tarn, Mana Confluence, Dockside Extortionist, Heat Shimmer, Shivan Reef, and Soul Ring. Get Probe resolves, Jim draws a card, then he casts Soul Ring and passes the turn. Morgan draws a card, plays a Breeding Pool untapped going to 38, then casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves through combat, and in his post-combat main, he targets Jim with the Carpet of Flowers trigger to create a green. He uses it to cast a Finhorn Elves, then passes the turn. Drew untaps on turn two and draws a card. Drew plays a Scalding Tarn, then cracks it going to 38. They grab Steam Vents tapped, then pass. Dan untaps, draws a card, and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Lotus Petal, then follows it up with a Dimir Signet. He cracks the Lotus Petal to cast Time Twister. It resolves, and he follows it up with an Underground Sea, then passes the turn. Jim untaps, plays a snow-covered island, and casts Urza. It enters the battlefield, and Jim makes a construct. Jim casts Urza's Bobble, that's the name of the movie! He taps it for blue, and casts Mana Vault, then uses the three from Mana Vault to cast Static Orb. It resolves, and Jim passes. Morgan untaps, draws a card, and targets Jim again with the Carpet of Flowers, this time adding Red Red. Morgan casts Lotus Petal, then casts Kalamax. He pays two life to cast Getaxian Probe targeting Jim. Jim reveals Cyclonic Rift, Resculpt, Pact of Negation, and Copy Artifact. Morgan draws a card to resolve Git Probe, then plays a Mystic Sanctuary tapped, and passes the turn. Drew untaps, draws a card, and plays Exotic Orchard. They cast Mana Crypt, then cast Krark with one colorless floating. They cast Lotus Petal, then sack the Lotus Petal and use the colorless to cast Harmonic Prodigy. Drew passes the turn. Dan untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, taking no damage, then draws a card. He plays a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn, then moves to pass. In his end step, Jim taps Static Orb to make a blue, and Dan continues passing. Jim untaps, takes one off the tapped Mana Vault, and draws a card. With nothing else to do, he passes the turn. Morgan untaps, draws a card, and targets Jim with the carpet, this time making green green. He casts a Nature's Lore, and it resolves, getting him a Tropical Island. He plays Spire Garden as his land for turn, then moves to combat, attacking Dan with Kalamax for 4 damage. There's no blocks. Morgan passes to Drew. Drew untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, taking no damage, then draws a card. They cast Ponder, triggering Krark twice. Drew loses both flips, so Ponder is returned to their hand, and they make no copies. Drew casts Ponder again, triggering Krark another two times. Drew wins one of the flips this time, and returns the original Ponder to hand, casting the copy. They elect not to shuffle, then draw a card, and move to end step. In Drew's end step, Dan cracks Wooded Foothills, going to 35. He grabs a Badlands. Dan casts Mystical Tutor, grabbing Toxic Deluge. Still in end step, Drew casts Thought Scour, triggering Krark twice. The first trigger copies Thought Scour. This resolves, revealing Toxic Deluge and Mana Drain. The second trigger returns Thought Scour to Drew's hand. Dan untaps on turn four, flipping for Mana Crypt and taking no damage. He draws a card. He casts Narset Parter of Veils, which resolves. He activates Narset's minus two ability and can't find any help in the top four. He fails to find and puts them on the bottom. Dan casts Windfall. 
Jim responds by casting Lure of Invention X equals 3. Morgan responds by casting Fierce Guardianship, targeting Windfall, triggering Kalamax. Kalamax trigger resolves, creating a copy of Fierce Guardianship, which he uses to target War of Invention. Both Fierce Guardianships resolve, clearing the stack, and Dan passes to Jim. Jim untaps, takes one damage off the tap mana vault, and draws a card. He casts Copy Artifact, which enters as a copy of Soul Ring, then he passes to Morgan. Morgan untaps, draws a card, and immediately moves to combat. He swings Kalamax at Narset, and there's no block, so Narset dies. Post-combat, there's a carpet trigger, and Morgan targets Jim, adding Green Green, which he then uses to cast Sylvan Library. With nothing else going on, Morgan passes to Drew. Drew untaps, and flips for Mana Grip, taking no damage. They draw a card. Drew casts Strike at Rich, triggering Krark twice. They win one flip, returning the original to hand. The copy resolves, creating a treasure. Drew casts Strike at Rich again, this time losing both flips, returning the original to hand, and making no treasure. They cast Strike at Rich one more time, lose both flips, and return the original to hand without making a copy. They cast Mana Vault and pass the turn. Dan untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, and takes no damage. He passes the turn. Jim untaps, taking one off the tap Mana Vault, then draws a card. He moves to combat and attacks Dan with the Construct. There's no blocks and Dan takes six. Jim transmutes Muddle the Mixture and grabs Imposter Mech. He plays Odawara as his land for turn, then casts Imposter Mech with one mana floating. It enters as a copy of Kalamax, then Jim passes to Morgan. Morgan untaps and draws a card, triggering Sylvan Library. He'll take eight and keep all of them. Morgan plays a Steam Vents tapped, then moves to combat, attacking Jim with Kalamax for five. There's no blocks, so Jim takes five. And Morgan passes the turn. Drew untaps, and in their upkeep, flips her mana crypt, taking no damage. Drew draws a card, then casts Desperate Ritual, triggering Krark twice. Jim responds by casting Resculpt, targeting Krark, triggering Jim's copy of Kalamax. This Kalamax trigger resolves, creating another copy of Resculpt. This one is targeting the Harmonic Prodigy. Both copies of Resculpt resolve, exiling Krark and the Prodigy and making a pair of 4-4 blue and red elemental tokens. Drew wins one of the flips for Desperate Ritual, returning the original to hand and adding 3 red. Drew then recasts Krark, and when that resolves, moves to their end step. In the end step, Morgan casts Nature's Claim targeting Imposter Mech, triggering his own Kalamax. The Kalamax trigger resolves, creating a copy of Nature's Claim, and this one's targeting Jim's Construct. The Nature's Claim targeting the Construct resolves, and then Jim casts a Pact of Negation targeting the Nature's Claim that's targeting his own copy of Kalamax. The Pact resolves, and Drew continues to pass the turn. Dan untaps on his turn 5, flips for Crypt, and takes no damage. He casts Underworld Breach with one colorless floating. Dan casts Chain of Vapor targeting his own Mana Crypt, sacking a land, and copying it to bounce Dimmer Signet, then lets that resolve without copying it. He recasts Mana Crypt, then recasts Dimmer Signet. He casts Brain Freeze targeting himself with the Storm Count at 4. He mills Soul Ring, Tarnished Citadel, Marsh Flats, Grim Monolith, Talisman of Dominance, Lotus Petal, Talisman of Progress, Odawara, Limduel's Vault, Enlightened Tutor, Chrome Mox, Tainted Pact, and Grinding Station, Bloodstained Mire, and Smothering Tithe. He casts the Lotus Petal and cracks it for a blue. He casts a Sol Ring. He uses the Sol Ring to cast Grinding Station, then he activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Sol Ring, targeting himself. He mills Ad Nauseam, Swan Song, and Archivist of Ogma. He casts Lotus Petal. When that enters the battlefield, it triggers Grinding Station, untapping it. He cracks Lotus Petal for a blue, then recasts Lotus Petal. He activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Mana Crypt, which mills Force of Will, Volcanic Island, and Demonic Tutor. He recasts the Mana Crypt from his graveyard, and with the blue floating from last time he cracked the Lotus Petal, he casts Brain Freeze with one colorless floating, targeting himself. At this point, the storm count is 11. Dan resolves all the copies. He then casts Lion's Eye Diamond, and cracks Lotus Petal for a white, casting Silence. Morgan responds by casting Narset's Reversal, targeting the Silence. Kalamax triggers, creating another Narset's Reversal, also targeting the Silence. Silence goes back to Dan's hand, and Morgan casts a copy of it. Dan pays two life to cast Mental Misstep from his graveyard, targeting Morgan's Silence. The misstep resolves. Dan then cracks his Lion's Eye Diamond for three white, discarding Silence, Flusterstorm, Dark Ritual, and Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. He casts Lotus Petal from his graveyard. He then recasts Silence. 
This time Morgan casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Silence. Dan then casts his own Flusterstorm from his graveyard, targeting each of Morgan's copies with one of each of his. All of the copies resolve, then Silence resolves. Dan recasts Lion's Eye Diamond, cracking it for 3 blue. He casts Brain Freeze, milling the rest of his deck, then casts Lion's Eye Diamond again, and cracks it for another 3 blue. He casts Thassa's Oracle, and with no cards in library, Dan wins the game. I have to say, this game was super fun. I'm really glad that I had a chance to get some games in with patrons, and I definitely think I'm going to be doing this again in the future. If you liked seeing this, make sure you subscribe and leave a like, and if you want to get in on the games, maybe consider becoming a patron. Until then, we'll catch you next time.